Hello, my friends. I'm so glad you have joined me today. After teaching the banjo for over 10 years now, I have noticed five big mistakes that new beginners make. These are mistakes that are not terrible mistakes, but they are big enough mistakes that it will affect their banjo playing progress. And some of them have hit these mistakes and never pushed by them, and it's literally threatened to have them put their banjo down and never pick it up again. I'm gonna tell you these five mistakes, and I'm gonna tell you how to fix them right now. Hit the like and subscribe button. Here we go. The first mistake that I see banjo players make is they take their anchor fingers and they place them on the bridge. What do I mean by that? They'll take their fingers and they will put it on the bridge right here. And they'll lean it on because it sort of gives them a good reference point. Now there's a problem with that. It acts as a mute, okay? So if I go without it, it's got a good sound. If I place that on there, listen how it dampers it, okay? Gives it more of a tinny sound. We wanna get our fingers off. Do not touch that bridge. Get them off. My bridge has a little notch cut out to help so I don't touch it. You can get close to it. Do not rest your fingers on the bridge your banjo is suffering from that. You wanna get that off and then it can ring true. The next thing that I see is to be aggressive with your thumb. We have to attack more aggressively with our thumb. Whenever you're playing the banjo, if your thumb is not playing just a little bit louder than the other two fingers that you're playing with, chances are it's not gonna sound right. Your thumb typically plays the melody, not always, but a lot of times it does. So to add some more feeling and depth to your banjo playing, you want your thumb on what almost whatever role you're playing, you want that thumb to ring out. Now, there are exceptions with songs where you're gonna have these two fingers that are gonna be playing a little bit louder, but not all fingers are the same whenever you're playing the banjo. What you wanna do is you want to attack with that thumb a little bit harder than the other fingers. Now, you just started out playing the banjo, maybe, and you're like, how on earth do I do that? I'm just trying to pick it. I understand you're working on accuracy and you're trying to memorize the different patterns and picking patterns and different stuff like that. I understand. What you wanna do whenever you start to get those down, though, focus in on that thumb, because that thumb is oftentimes left behind. I know a lot of people, they'll attack with this pointer finger, and that is not the finger that you wanna be most aggressive with. Be aggressive with your thumb. The third thing we see is that you need to play in front of people. And you're like, well, I'm out on the back 40, there's no one out here. Well, go play in front of a goat or a cow or something. Playing in front of people or animals or the mirror will really, really help you. One of the things that I used to do, I would play in front of the mirror, and what I would, my brain would get so distracted so easily. I would watch myself playing in the mirror and I would get distracted watching myself and it would mess me up while I was playing my banjo. What I had to do is I had to get used to playing in front of an image of someone. I had to play the banjo in front of them. So now I could do that, I could watch myself playing and it wouldn't mess me up. Now I can play with other guitar players, mandolin players, violin players. It's so important to play in front of other people and not just other people who know how to play instruments, family members. Friends, it's a very, uh, very essential to the growth of a musician to, to get out of their box, break out of their comfort zone, and play their instrument in front of other people. Banjo players, one of the mistakes that they make is that their finger picks are too loose, and they've got them poked way out here. They're barely hanging on, and the finger picks are poked way out here. Now, I know some incredible banjo players who play with their finger picks way out. That's not a problem if they're on securely, okay? And I've seen so many people, their finger picks are moving around all over the place. Don't be afraid to take that pick and just push it back in there a little bit. No one can tell you exactly how your picks should be. You, that's up to you, it's a comfort level. How far do I want them poking out? Mine, you can see, just poke out just a little bit. That's almost like uh, an extender to my finger, you know? I don't want them out there a long way. When I first started off, I did. 
because that's what I saw other banjo players. And then I found out my style, no, I didn't like them. I didn't feel like I had enough control when the farther they were poking out. One of the things you have to do though, is you have to make sure that those picks are secure. You really want your finger picks to be secure to where they're not moving around. Now, you don't want them so tight that they're cutting the blood off. You want them to where they're nice and comfortable. They can have, I mean, it's gonna have a little bit of wiggle in it, but it's not sliding or moving on your finger. You do not want that. Make sure your finger picks are secure. Number five, the fifth mistake that I see beginners make is they will not break away from the page. They will not stop looking at the tablature before them. They'll get their banjo music, they'll sit it out, and they'll begin to play looking at the banjo music, and they'll never progress past that. Why? Because they are so focused in on that, they're not focusing on, on their picking hand or their fret hand or the fretboard. It's very, very important that we look at the tablature to learn the tablature, but we look at the fretboard to memorize the fretboard. We must memorize the fretboard, so important. How do we do that? By stop looking at the tablature. You're gonna to have to do it eventually. Look at it and then look away. Look at it, put it up, and then try it. Are you gonna mess up? Yes, tons of times. But what you're gonna do is your brain's gonna to start to memorize that. You learn it from the sheet, and then you memorize it by looking at the fretboard. Stop looking at the tablature so much. A little bit, then put it aside. 